So welcome back to the Jim Green Footwear channel. Today we are back on our Jim Green adventures where we are going to be heading out to a local reserve around the corner from our factory that just so happens to have a small herd of buffalo on it. And today we are going to be doing a deep dive into our limited edition African buffalo skin boots that are currently in production and just educating you more on why we are running this, this initiative. For those new to Jim Green and our Boots for Rangers program, our African Ranger Boots is an initiative between uh, Jim Green Footwear and the Game Rangers Association of Africa. And for every 10 pairs of the African Ranger Boots that we sell, we donate a pair to a Ranger in need. And to date, we are coming up to almost a year and a half of this initiative and we are closing in on 2,000 pairs of boots donated. So thanks to all of you that have supported the initiative so far and we're looking forward to growing and creating more exposure around our wild areas. So we've just arrived at the reserve. Now let's go and see if we can locate this buffalo herd and get a closer look at these majestic animals. So we managed to locate the herd of buffalo. Fortunately, we got out here very early in the morning and generally this time of the day, they, they up early in the morning feeding on these uh, open grasslands. The mighty buffalo is also known as the Nyati in the Zulu language and is a symbol of strength to the people of Southern Africa. While these majestic animals have roamed the plains of Southern Africa for thousands of years, there's a need for population control. So we've parked about 150 meters away from the buffalo herd. They're busy feeding in the open plains there. And one of the reasons that we've come out to this area in particular is because overgrazing can really affect these areas uh, in a negative way and here you can see where the buffalo herd has moved through now it's not only the buffalo it's also other animals uh, such as zebra warthogs obviously the impala and the general uh, grazers they can come through here and they can destroy these areas of of grassland now we're at the end of our summer months here in south africa and you can see it's pretty green but in six to seven months time, come the end of winter, this entire area is going to be barren. And I can almost guarantee you that where we're standing now is just going to be dust. So we're at the edge of this overgrazed area of the reserve. And what we're going to try and do is get a little bit closer to the herd. Uh, so a nickname for buffalo is actually Black Death, which is a term given by hunters. And because when they come one-on-one -on -one with uh, lone bulls, they are extremely dangerous. But when they're in herds and safety in numbers, approaching downwind with a little bit of protection between yourself and the herd, they generally are they're quite inquisitive animals. And majority of the time, they are, if they pick up on our scent, they'll gradually move off. But if you can see in the distance, they're all casually moving through the bush without feeding on the grass. So population control is vital for disease control measurements. Buffalo are highly susceptible to multiple diseases that can spread to other animals and livestock. Each year, hundreds of buffalo are removed from our local reserves for disease and population control measures. With everything on the animal being utilized but the skin, we decided something needed to be done. We trucked in over 14 tons of salt for this process, which is the same weight as a small helicopter. And over the time period of six weeks, we managed to get six tons of buffalo skins, which was 154 skins in total. Once salted and left to dry for two weeks, we shipped them back to our tannery where they got to work on turning them into leather. A little interesting fact for the area that we're filming in today is that this reserve was established about 20 years ago. And you would have seen, 
attention in some of the b-roll and um, the audio you hear the little chip 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 of uh, the red-billed oxpeckers and they were actually extinct in this area and what actually happened was that a, a little breeding group was introduced and now 20 years later there, there are hundreds of them flying around which just highlights the importance of conservation and the people protecting these areas for some of these some of these species that have disappeared and now through some conservation efforts are starting to return back to the area. Personally, I'm a big believer in fencing our wild areas as it helps preserve what, uh, the efforts that are being done inside. And as you can see, it is a mammoth task keeping these fence lines in, in working order, which is another task that is done by, by patrol rangers. So the reserve that we're filming at today you'll see has a fence that surrounds it. Now lots of people, and especially tourism, they frown upon South African reserves because most of them have this wire barrier around it. Now if you go to reserves in East Africa, such as Kenya, Tanzania, none of their reserves has fences around them. And there's lots of negativity around this and people will not visit some reserves because of this aspect, when really they're actually such an important uh, asset to have because these fences are actually what is protecting the outside world to the wild the wild areas inside now there's a, a really good documentary that is done by black bean productions james Souter, and it's called the edge of existence and they go to these east african countries and they show the effect of not fencing reserves and how animals once they get to the borders they end up infringing on on small communities uh small small scale farmers eating their crops as previously mentioned the fence is not here to keep the animals in but rather to keep the animals from going and causing trouble um, with the local communities buffalo rhino and various other game marks can be extremely dangerous if cornered and, and encountered. So we've climbed up here to a little lookout deck just to give us a better perspective of the wild area that we're filming in today and the importance that a fence plays and most importantly the rangers that protect these wild areas. So if we look out here, the reserve that we're filming in today is about 2,000 acres, but the general wild area with all the farmers combined you know, you're probably looking in the tens of thousands of acres. But if you look out into the distance there, you can see there's a, a feedlot where there's a bunch of cattle, which is extremely important given that there are buffalo um, only a handful of miles away from, away from them. So should disease break out in this area, not only will the herd and animals on the, on the reserve be in danger, but that farmer's entire um, Herd of, herd of cattle will be, will, will be under threat as well. With our Brutes Rangers initiative and tying it into manufacturing Brutes of African Buffalo Skin, what we have created is a full circle process. This initiative has not only provided employment opportunities for a handful of South Africans, but has also helped support the conservation efforts of game rangers throughout Southern Africa. We raise much needed funds by purchasing the skins from the reserve and through the sale of these 2,000 pairs that we have been able to manufacture, we will be donating 200 pairs of our African Ranger boots to game rangers in need. So a huge thank you to all of you that have supported this initiative so far. We have already, just through the pre-sale, managed to sell just over 70% of the boots manufactured, with South Africans' deliveries just going out last week, and we are about to load a, a big shipment of boots heading to uh, the United States. And if you want to see more videos with content like this, just let us know below in the comment section. And please do us a favor by subscribing to our channel and hitting that like button.